So, as many of you have requested, here we go with a special video to complete the saga of the extraordinary life of Tommaso Buscetta. As mentioned in the previous videos, the meeting with Giovanni Falcone marked for Buscetta the period of the so called repentance. The boss of the two worlds, Buscetta, had always wanted to clarify that he was not a real repentant, but a man who just no longer shared the view and the mindset of the Cosa Nostra, especially that part of the Sicilian mafia run by Salvatore Raina, the head of the Corleonese family, and the true winner of the Second Mafia War. The wounds inflicted on Buscetta's family were also instrumental in persuading Don Massino to reveal such important secrets of the Mafia to the Italian justice. Tommaso Buscetta was not the first repentant in the history of the Sicilian Mafia, but he can certainly be considered the most important one. Buscetta knew very well that by revealing the secrets of Cosa Nostra, and above all its existence as an organised entity, he would face terrible revenge, as in the end happened. But Don Massino went ahead anyway and decided to collaborate with a character like Giovanni Falcone, who certainly had the power to give organised crime a pretty hard time. Tommaso Buscetta initially expressed himself cautiously, but once he realised the ability and tenacity of the Judge Falcone in front of him, as well as his sense of honour, Don Massino gradually became more talkative and began to reveal the structure of Cosa Nostra. The omerta, which means silence, typical of the Mafia, had never really allowed the state to discover the real extent of the clan's power and the way that the Mafia was organised. It was only thanks to Tommaso Buscetta that the world discovered a new, dark, violent and extremely powerful reality that coexisted in the shadows of a country apparently ordered and devoid of dangerous criminal societies. Justice thus learnt that Cosa Nostra was a rigidly pyramidical society, at the base of which was a family, which had power over a district or village. Several families made up a district, while the Commissione was a collective of the bosses, which approved or disapproved of the murders and participates in every decision of the criminal organisation as a whole. Tommaso Buscetta gave names and surnames of bosses and executors of numerous unsolved Mafia crimes. Giovanni Falcone certainly had really hit the nail on the head and being the only listener to the interrogator, writes down all these revelations in his own hand, which are finally exhausted within a couple of months of collaboration between the former boss and this fierce judge. However, until 1991, Buscetta talked about many things but refused to reveal the ties between the Sicilian Mafia and the politicians, many of which were seated in the parliament and the government. It wasn't yet the right time and he just didn't want to risk more than he should. As a collaborator, Buscetta obtained, in exchange from the state, a new identity. So in 1984, Buscetta was extradited to the United States and was given US citizenship. Don Massino had to escape the revenge of the Mafia and in exchange for new revelations about American organised crime, he entered the Witness Protection Programme and disappeared from the radar. Over the years, the turncoat underwent yet more cosmetic surgery that allowed him to come out in part and even take a cruise in the Mediterranean with his wife Christina. But Buscetta returned to the front page of the newspapers just two years later, surprisingly, to intervene in the Maxi trial in Palermo and in the investigation to find pizza connection in the USA. Thanks to Buscetta's revelations, Italian judges were in a position to implement a criminal trial of gigantic proportions in order to condemn the main characters of the Sicilian Mafia. It took place in 1986, and the first defendants in the first instance were numerous mafiosi, as many as 475 criminals, including bosses, underbosses and killers. Today this event is remembered as the Maxi Trial of Palermo, and although the name refers only to the first degree trial which ended in 1987, the investigation was only finally closed in 1992. On the 3rd of April 1986, 
Bouchette's lawyer declared that the collaborator was willing to appear at the trial to testify in person. His presence astonished many mafiosi, and having Bouchetta walking amongst them was certainly one of the most iconic moments of the entire Maxi trial. Don Massino began his testimony with a very precise phrase which made several mafiosi go berserk. I remain with the spirit with which I entered Cosa Nostra. I no longer share those rules and the organisation to which I belonged, so I am not a repentant. The man then began to take his revenge on his enemies, and overwhelmingly prevails in the exchange with the defendant, Pippo Carlo, a very high-ranking boss allied with the Corleonese family. After this exchange, the other defendants renounced their wish for a confrontation, and Bouchetta returned to the USA, disappearing once again from the radar until 1992. The murder of Falcone pushed the turncoat to make new revelations to the remaining Italian anti-mafia judges with whom Falcone had been working. This time, Bouchetta went all out and then began to reveal the most important secrets about the link between the Italian government and the Sicilian mafia, which he'd never deliberately mentioned before. His accusations were hard and they were precise and were directed against the political reference of Cosa Nostra, amongst whom was an unexpected name, Giulio Andriotti. Andriotti was arguably the most important politician of Italy after the Second World War. Nominated several times as head of the Italian government as well as minister, Andriotti was the leading figure of the most important political party in Italy until 1993. In spite of his active presence, Tommaso Buscetta, in the book interview by Saverio Lodato, expressed his belief that the Italian government had never really delivered a genuinely hard punch against Sicilian mafia at all. Buscetta mentioned that the Italian government was more interested in appearing as a fierce fighter against the Mafia, but in reality, this supposed brutal approach was only for the benefit of the newspapers, and thus, of course, voters. Tommaso Buscetta died of cancer in 2000, at the age of 71. Even if he could never be classed as a real repentant, the man most certainly made his unique mark to create one of the most important episodes in Italian crime history. And this is how the saga of Tommaso Buscetta ends. It's gripped us and we certainly hope that you enjoyed it too. But don't worry, we'll soon be commencing a new, equally enthralling saga. So don't forget to subscribe, not to miss it. And of course, do stay tuned. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Ciao.